Live and direct from Atlanta, Georgia. This is Final Round 19. I'm your host with the most, aka M O N K Double E Monkey. But you guys know me better than Scott Popular. And I have some esteemed guests today, and they're going to introduce themselves. This is my gentleman right here. His name is? My name is Triforce Johnson. All right. My name is Ron Grayson, also known as Hero. All right. Now, both of these gentlemen belong to one very outstanding gaming group known as Empire Arcadia, correct? Yes. All right. cool. And you guys have done a lot to the point where you guys actually have a Guinness World Record? Yes, um, the most documented tournament winning team in the world. Bravo. Thank you. Bravo, bravo. All right. And, and um, you, you guys have done so much, but at this point, in 2016, mm -hmm. what are your plans for the future? What are you, you going to do? Well, the, the team has kind of, um, we, we have kind of a rolled back from the whole competitive aspect. We still compete. It's a part of our heritage. And in fact, we're the, the oldest um, gaming group gaming group in the fighting game community. There's been other esports teams in other areas, but I think we're like number four in the world, but um, in terms of the oldest team, but in the fighting game community, we're the very first um, esports team in the fighting game community. But um, focusing on your question, what we're doing right now, we're reforging our front line because we're taking up a couple of the new games, Street Fighter V, Mortal Kombat XL, Smash Brothers, Pokemon, that type of stuff. And uh, we also want our team to kind of expand in the other areas of esports which is like League of Legends or Hearthstone, Counter-Strike and so forth. So right now we're kind of regrouping, but at the same time we want to focus on creating content that helps push the scene forward. Because when you like look at Final Round right now, yeah. Final Round is taking a huge step forward and literally bringing the fighting game community on its back. Um, and it, rightfully so, because you guys are like the oldest fighting game tournament brand in like history period, 19 years, Final Round 19. And I'm so glad that you guys have done so much, you know, big ups to Larry and all the guys in the final round crew, you guys have done an outstanding job. And you know, you guys have done an outstanding job as well. So I think we all, we all have to work together. Yes, this is 100% true. I've been saying that since we, we, we got here. We, we definitely have to work together. We gotta together. work together. We gotta work together. But I mean, not to slight you in any way, shape, mm -hmm. or form, but like a lot of people think, and, and me too, I'm not, even gonna, I'm not even gonna lie to you, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. Like, mm -hmm. you are extremely intelligent. We've talked on two different occasions, all right? and, and there was alcohol involved. Okay. <laughs> so just, you know, just to save grace. Yeah. But you were extremely intelligent, man. But a lot of, and no, I'm not everybody, just me. Yeah. The theatrics. The theatrics, okay. Are they needed? Yes, actually, it's a part of the FGC. Um, okay. If you look at the FGC as a whole, uh, let me give you an example. Look at a guy like Sonic Fox. Okay. He runs around with a ferry. All right. Um, but that's his, that's, that's... Look at Yipes. He uses the Pringle can with the curly mustache. Okay. Everybody has some, some type of gimmick or, uh, you know, facade that they put on to provide entertainment right. in competitive gaming. Right. And fighting games have always, if you look at fighting as a sport, period, whether it's virtual or reality, everybody does it. Everybody does it. That's just a part. It's a part of entertaining. That's what makes the fighting game community so um, illustrious. When people from the outside look in, they go, wow, you know, this is a lot of hype. But they don't know how to kind of, you know, organize that and push it forward. But the only people that know how to do it is the people who've been here for such a long period of time. Like Final Round's entire um, marketing promotion is like the home of hype. So you need characters if you're going to be hype. You that's need that, characters. That is, that's, that is definitely true. All right. Now, as a player, um, and how long have you been with Arcadia? For, since it was established in 2000 2002. You know, 2002, we established the organization. Before that, we were a community. Okay. But he's been with us since when we were yeah. a community. When we were the community. Yeah. All right. All right. So now, now you're a player. And um, would you consider yourself a pro player? So let me just yes, ask absolutely. You. I'm, and not to boast myself, but that's nothing to do with my ego. I say I'm the strongest Street Fighter player in the United States and arguably the world. Okay. All so right. I, this year, that is my thing. That's why I attained the mastery overall as an overall Street Fighter player. I am, I say I'm the strongest. So the best. Tell them all the games you play, Street Fighter wise. So every Street Fighter from Street Fighter 2, this includes Championship Edition Hyper Fighting, Capcom Fighting Jam, Hyper Alpha. Super Turbo, um, all the series. So this is before this is before our community became the fighting game community. Right? Before the fighting game community, which I came in around 2002. Okay. So, you're, so you're still a part of the arcade generation. Yes, absolutely. 
Okay. That's why I found myself on right. the case. Now, 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 God forbid anything ever like tragic happened to you. But if you were, you, if you were forced to go into the the role of uh, trifle chair, like you can't be a player anymore. You have to evolve into something else. What would be the first thing you would tell someone who was aspiring to be a pro gamer? Um, just learn, uh, learn about yourself. Learn about what you're getting into. Uh, learn about all the ins and outs of you know your community or you know, facets that you have to get into, uh, get opinions. Uh, don't, don't try to try not to be too judgmental, or cloud your judgment, or use like the negative ego to cloud your judgment. Get different in inputs, different opinions, and um, yeah, just be creative with okay. what you do. Be creative yeah. and have fun. Yes, absolutely. All right. Now, now let's, let's talk about on the world bracket, okay? okay. Um, right now, we have Street Fighter Five, okay? And everybody got it at the same time, in theory. Yes. Okay. Let us, let, <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Let, let, me just, let me just be clear about it. Let's, it's not sugarcoated. Like, everybody did not get it at the same time. Key people got it mm -hmm. before the rest of the general public did. Okay. Yeah. But, but let's, let's kind of just, you know, we're not going to forget that that happened. But we're going to. But we're going to acknowledge that it did. Yeah. Okay. With that being said, with the stage that we are in right now, and I want him to ask it first because he's the player. Okay. Who has the strongest front? Would this be America? Uh, you got you to break it down. Because America's huge. We're talking East Coast, West Coast, so, Japan, Europe. And it, it's kind of hard. It's, and this is a really hard question because it's still very new. Well, the United States is broken up. So we have East Coast, West Coast, South, Southwest, and all these other factions. We can't all get together and play all in once one uh, particular event unless it's an event like Final Round, that's Evolution. Yeah. Like that. Japan has whatever. They're um, constantly playing each other. and um, Actually, they were not. I live in Japan. Our arcades are, they, they, we, there's no Street Fighter Five present in any arcade in the whole entire country. Well, I mean, in terms of like unification, they, they really, uh, they do their best to band together, I should say that. Whereas we're we're nationalism. Separate. Okay, all right, nationalism. Okay, okay, as the team, as the war front. Yeah. Yes. Okay, all right, okay. And uh, that's one of the main things that's separate. We have, of course, strong, we have our strongest, they have their strongest, but they're, um, I guess it comes down to the quality of players and what they're, they're doing. There's, some things that separates United States players from really getting to their level that they need to. Um, it's like a uh, whole little things where we need to band together and you know get that. Whether it comes down to little things, playing casuals with each other, like some some players actually don't play casuals. A lot of some top players don't play casuals, and you know, they only tournament. And say, I feel like that thing kind of hurts. Right. Well, how about you? Hurts us, so. How about you? Do you play casuals as well? I play casuals. I, for me, as a master, I have to play everyone. No matter what, no matter how much a player may dial on me, or you know, you hear these common things, it's it's me within my ability to overcome, uh, overcome any obstacle and develop myself, and that's part of being a master. Uh, learning about myself, I'm learning about myself and I'm excelling myself at the same time. I need the challenge, I need the boundaries, I need to know where I'm at. That's a whole learning process and. Whether someone beats me because I played them so much in casuals in the tournament, right. they say, "Okay, oh, I looked at that and I know uh, where I have to go from there." Right. I just look at that. I would, not everyone has the mentality, obviously, but uh, that I feel like would help, like in a sense, because all the masters are doing it. Omahara's a master of what he's doing. Uh, Onuki's a, a, a master, grandmasters. Well, they understand this. Okay. Right, I'd like to see you in Japan. I would like to see him in Japan as well. Okay, I like to see him. All right, I'm working on that this year. Okay, all right. So then, as a question. Now, for me, in terms of um, in terms of Europe, the United States and Japan, I believe Japan still has the advantage, only because of the that nationalist mentality. They represent Japan. The and don't, this does not mean the United States doesn't do it because clearly when you go into Evo and you hear the chants of USA. Uh, but in terms of us working together, there's too much division in the United States where we, we really don't learn. For instance, um, all right, let's look at the game. In my opinion, a lot of people say, Triforce, you do not play fighting games. Because I don't. I, I'm, not a, I'm not from the fighting game community. I'm originally from the retro gaming community. I just look young, and I came into the fighting game community shortly after. But there are certain fundamentals I know as a, a master um, and, and I'd say that, I'd, I say that strongly, a lot of people are like, Master of what, you know, I don't want to puff up my chest, but I've played long enough in gaming. I've played for 34 years, I have six Guinness World Records in gaming, I have like a ton of Tony Galaxy's records. I've played in the arcade area, I've won my championships, I've done my time. 
When it comes down to fundamental gameplay, the United States lacks that t tremendously. A lot of, um, I've been saying this to the guys back since 2003 when I saw Diagon, they say, he's psychic, he knows how to DP. And I said, no, he doesn't. I'm like, the guy knows something about the game, which is why his Dragon Punch has come out. Six years later, we all find out about option selects. And they're like, that's what he's been doing? Yeah. And I'm like, see, there's just certain things that they know about the game. So they have more knowledge than, uh, than we do. Uh, not by much in this uh, day and age, but this is one thing that they definitely have over us. Their master level fighters are still playing in today's games. With today's engine, but they're using their fundamentals. A lot of our masters are retired. Very few of them are playing. Uh, John Choi, pretty much retired. Alex Bayer is still hanging in there. J um, Jason Cole, he's retired. We have so many of our masters who don't rely solely on frame data. This is a huge problem mm. in America. A lot of the players are looking at frame data. Why do you do that? He's negative. Did he not know that? Why are you assuming he would know? But you would only have that mentality if you have the fundamentals down pat that you would say, okay, if I'm gonna rush the guy down in a corner, I'm gonna rush command grab, throw him down. Rush command grab, throw him down. Why don't you just rush up and just block? He may wake up Dragon Punch, but they will rush and try to do something else or press a button and then they get countered. And then they wonder like, but you were negative. Why would you do that? Yeah, but he's in a desperate situation. They don't take these things into account. Okay. In Japan, that mentality has stuck with them for 20 something plus years. And this is why when you see them beating up on guys that like, how did he read them? They're taking it so much more into account. We are so linear and they are so versatile or diverse in their thinking when it comes to competitive fighting games. And that's what keeps the advantage on them. A lot of people say, Triforce has no idea what he's talking about, but ask any of the OGs. And they're gonna be like, no, he knows exactly what he's talking about. I played Street Fighter 2 in the arcade and Street Fighter 1 and Mortal Kombat, so I know how some of these things work. I may not know how to play today, but mentally I have the fundamentals in pack, so when I see things happen on the screen, I can understand why. Yeah. And frame data isn't the Bible. Yeah. It doesn't get you wins. Yeah, I mean, it's, still, it's important. Yeah. But yeah. It's important, it's yes, end it's important. but it's not the end all. Yeah. It's, it's, exactly. not, it's not the basis of chess. Yes, it's not the basis of chess. You, know, you have to add a little bit, you have to be diverse. It, as Gerard was saying in terms of being a master, he plays a lot of people and losing is a part of him learning to be a master. You must lose to understand what it is to be a master. If you're just winning, you have not reached the master level yet. You have to lose. Because if you don't lose, how are you going to learn? Okay. You can't learn when winning. Yeah, you'll learn a lot more in losing than you ever will. Right. So I just made a general open challenge. Anyone who can beat me in out of the 23 Street Fighter games, you can beat me in 15 of them. In, in long in first of fives or sevens, and I'll give you five hundred dollars, which is you know an incentive for people to play. And it's not you know anything. Five hundred dollars. It's not about five hundred dollars. Out, 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 out of the twenty games, if they fifteen out of the twenty. Fifteen out of the twenty. If they can beat twenty three, it's about twenty three to twenty six games. I, I have to relook at right. the old day over, but, but yeah, just basically if I, yeah, get a set on play, and I'll, I'll give the money up. You know, all right, okay, you shook with me. I don't know who's gonna that's come after you, but you shook with me. All right, that's, that's what's up. Don't worry, the money will be there. Okay, okay. all right. Well, hey man, thank you, thank you brothers for, for, for being here. Thank you for and being so solid. All right, and because like, you know, I see a lot of people giving you and the whole Empire thing and it's a lot of negative shade, but man, y'all really cool, man. And they let's just, work together. They just don't about understand. When, once, if they, if they, when, they, when they see Empire and they roll out later to see I have a movie called the Tri, uh, Triforce that's I didn't name the movie, the producer actually did the movie Triforce. But um, the film gives a real look at our lives growing up and living you know, our lives as gamers. Um, we live together, we play together, we learn together, um, and we go out and we experience together in the entire fighting game community from when we started in 2002 all the way up till now. And the purpose of this movie is to give a real comprehensive look and a transparent look at the organization as a whole and how we all work together to keep our organization together till this day. A lot of people have a lot to say about EMP, but guess what? After 15 years, we're still here. And many, many groups, teams, and sponsors who have far more money than us have come and gone. And that's what's up. All right. And like I said, I wish you guys the best.